grouchy nerd. Alright, you antisocial weirdos, let's learn two games that play at the ideal player count. One. Sprawlopolis and its standalone sequel slash expansion Agropolis were designed by Stephen Aramini, Danny Devine, and Paul Kluka, and published by Button Shy Games. Now, the crux of these games plays the same, so I'm just going to explain them together, and your goal in each of the games is a simple one. Get enough points to win. I'll give you a moment to compose yourself. Each card has two sides, a scoring condition side and a block side. Both sides on each card are unique. The block side of each card is made of four blocks in each of four zone types. Well, eight zone types, but four for each game. Sprawlopolis has commercial in blue, park in green, industrial in gray, and residential in orange, where Agropolis has cornfields of yellow, orchards of red, vineyards of purple, and livestock of brown, because who doesn't want to think about animal feces when playing a game? I know I do. Now, each livestock block is going to have either one or two pens. When it comes to scoring, if there's two pens, that block counts for having two pens. That'll make sense later. Each card in both games also has one or two segments of road. I'll explain the roads a bit more in the scoring, but if you connect a road on another card, it counts as the same road, and you want to have fewer roads in your town, not more. All right, now shuffle the 18 cards that make up your opolis of choice and take three of them, set them aside with their scoring side face up, but don't look at them. No, I'm just kidding. You can look at them. You should look at them. You should actually put them out so you can see them the whole time. They're the rules of the game. See, every game is going to have the same two base scoring factors, which we'll get into later, but the main scoring is going to come from these three cards that you just set aside, thereby making almost every game you play have unique rules. Each card has a number and a rule. Add the numbers together on your set-aside cards to get your target score, the score you're trying to beat. And don't worry, the cards are only numbered 1 through 18, so even the mathematically challenged among us can get the sum fairly easily by asking Siri. The rest of the cards will deal with their blocks side. Draw three cards as your starting hand. Place the top card of the draw deck in the center of the build area, which is where you'll be playing cards. Notice, won't you please, that the draw deck has its blocks side face up, so you're always going to be able to see the next card that's coming, like in Tetris. It is Almost nothing like Tetris. Oh, it's kind of like Dr. Mario. Because of the pill. Remember the pills? Each turn plays thusly. Play one of the cards from your hand following the follow following these rules. One block edge of the new card must meet an existing edge of a block or play so that new blocks overlap. You may cover some or even all of an existing card. You may not tuck a new card under an existing card, and corner to corner is not a valid play, and I think deep down you knew that. The card may be flipped 180 degrees, but it must be played horizontally. Once you've played a card, draw a new card if able and start all over again. Once the draw deck runs out, you keep playing cards from your hand until your hand runs out. When your hand runs out, the game is over. Fiend. Every game has the same two base scoring conditions. First, you get one point for each block in the largest group of blocks of each zone type. Yeah. So you should be getting four numbers here, one for each zone type. Blue, green, gray, and orange, or red, yellow, purple, and poop. If multiple groups of the same zone type have the same number of blocks, just score one of them. Next, subtract one point for each road, which may be as short as one block or can stretch out over many cards. Sprawlopolis does suggest for an easier game skipping this rule. Maybe you want to do that the first couple of times you play just so you get a feel of how it works. Next, the set aside scoring cards. Follow each one one by one, adding to or subtracting from your score. If your final score is equal to or greater than your target score, you have the very best opolis in the whole world, and you should feel very, very special. But you may be asking yourself, well, what if I'm some kind of extra weird masochistic nerd who just hates the feeling of winning? Well, Button Shy's got you covered. Sprawlopolis says only score your one largest zone group for a harder game, but Agropolis actually adds a whole other level of challenge with feed fees. Feed fees are on some of the scoring cards in Agropolis and look like this. Add the number of matching livestock types found on each of the scoring cards to your target score. If you have multiple scoring cards with feed fees, you do them all. Sounds terrible.
But hey, you do you. And that's basically it. Now, every card is unique, so no two games are going to play alike. And with taking any combination of three out of 18, I'm not like a, a math, I don't, I don't, I'm not a mather, but that's got to be at least what, like 50 unique games that you can, oh, at least 100. At least 800? Well, you better get playing. That's each. All right, so that's how to play. Now get off my farm. Also, at least 50 totally covered 800, so you don't have to embarrass me. The Grouchy Nerd.